<laughs> how y'all doing? I'm gonna just continue and pick right back up where it's at. Uh, like I said, the key, the key, and for those who might just be turning into it, this is part 14, a continuation from 13, and we're talking about the altar of burnt, the altar of burnt offering, which I like to call the altar of sacrifice, where the blood of the lamb is slain in the sanctuary. But anyway. Now go back and watch part 13 if you haven't. Then we can catch up on this one. But anyway, the, the key that we have to remember that we as Christians often lose sight of is that Jesus chose to step down from glory. We can't imagine what he, what he was willing to leave. Because we, we see these movie directors picture heaven and this. Heaven is beyond our imagination. And Jesus stepped down from heaven to come and be placed in the womb of a woman. To, to, to deal with sinful flesh and sinful man to save you or not. That in itself. Him voluntarily becoming the man, the lamb slain, is is beyond all reasoning and deserves so much more thought and speculation. You know, many of us wouldn't even die for our neighbor next door. Many of us wouldn't even die for our spouse, you know, or for our children. We wouldn't even die. We wouldn't even live for our spouses or for our children. We're so caught up in self. You know, even I at times have to be wary that I'm caught up in self. Matter of fact, all the time, not sometimes, but all the time, we have to make sure that I'm not just out here living for self. So let's really look at this, you know, at what, and I believe when, when many of us get to heaven and actually see heaven and all of the universe for what it really is, then we'll realize how big and humongous the sacrifice was that Jesus actually made. And, you know, and with that being said, let's delve into it even more. Uh... Revelation. Let's look at Revelation chapter 13. Revelation chapter 13. And I want to read verse 8. And I want to read verse 8. At the end of verse 8 it says, <clears throat> well let's just read the whole verse. It says, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb. Not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Now why would it say lamb slain from the foundation of the world? Beloved, I'm gonna show both aspects. Now a lot of times growing up, I used to just think that meant our world. But like I was stating, that means slain from the foundation. That word world also means universe, the universe. And just just so y'all know, the altar burnt offering right here, the altar burnt offering right here, in Hebrew means Ola, O-L-A-H, which means ascent. Or stairway that's powerful when we think about Christ stepping down to become the lamb God coming down to become the sacrifice the only thing worthy to uh, save mankind the Holy Spirit says dwell in that a little bit why why was that the only way why because the cre only the person who could rectify the, the 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 laws or the rules the only person who could change the criteria of the law and the wage of death were the people who instituted it so the angels couldn't have made the sacrifice why they didn't institute the plan of redemption they didn't institute the rules of the wages of sin is death only the one only the ones who instituted it could change it and Paul deals with this in Hebrews when he talks about the testator changing the testament. You know, actually the New Testament is basically the upgrade to salvation. You know, the upgrade. You know, and only God himself could make the upgrade when I put it in everyday terms. Only God himself could make the upgrade. And like I said, it's beyond our reasoning and we will dwell on these things for centuries to come. But, you know, slain from the foundation of the world. Let me get back to it. Jesus chose before they created any planet, any other galaxy, any beings, they came up with the plan of salvation for mankind. How do we know this? Jeremiah 12. I think I stated this in an earlier in an earlier uh, episode, but I want to say Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17 verse 12 says, a glorious high throne 
from the beginning is the place of our sanctuary. The sanctuary was the first place ever created. So how do we know that uh, that's when the plan of salvation was made? Because the sanctuary, as we've been studying, the sanctuary and all of the pattern is all about redemption and Christ. So this is, the you know, that verse lets us know that the, before they created anything, why do I see the logic in that? Why does it make so much sense? Because I like to do things like uh, if, if, God, I can see them sitting around and they said, before you, before, you know, say if you had to clean your house, say if you had to clean your house, but you know, your, uh, but you know that when your, your son come home, say there's a, a pack of nails in his bedroom floor. And when he opens the door, because he likes to rush in his room, he's just going to step on the nails and dice up his feet before you can sit there and clean the house and have peace of mind and relax you're gonna get the nails up because you're, you're thinking of, of, of foresight you're using foresight like let me go ahead and get these nails up and get this out the way then I can go handle my business and and things of that nature because I know this is taken care of I'm at ease I know my son isn't gonna get hurt things of that nature. that's what God did with man they already looked down the line they knew sin would sprout his head they knew Lucifer would rebel one day and so they said let's make the plan of salvation now before we do anything else, let's make the plan of salvation now. And now, since the plan of salvation is made, set, agreed to, now let's go out, create, make new creatures, have fun, fellowship, you know, because everything is taken care of. The plan of salvation is already made, laid, now we can relax. And so, just for Jesus making that choice for you and I, it's humongous. It's humongous. And let's remember, it was God. God oftentimes gets underlooked the Father. It was the Father's plan. You know, of course, I love my King Christ and the sacrifice he did. But beloved, let's not get it twisted. He was following the Father's orders. And when his flesh got weak, he cried out, Father, three times he prayed, can we find another way? But the Father said, no, this is the only way. This It was the Father's plan. The plan of redemption is the Father's plan. And sometimes we can lose sight of that. Sometimes we can lose sight of that, you know. You can never praise Christ too much. But praise the Father also <laughs> and the Holy Spirit, you know. Let's, let's not forget that this was a plan that all three came together and orchestrated. It was hard for all of them. It was hard for all of them. Because like I said, you know, when looking at the cross, and like I said, the Father is often overlooked. But it broke me one time, and I did a sermon on this. The sermon is in my page. It's, uh, I think I did it a couple years ago. But uh, I think it was the, the truth about the cross. Uh, who would hurt more? Of course, Christ, everything Christ went through was, was horrible. And things of that nature. And then he had to drink the wine of the wrath of God, you know, which is poured out without mercy, you know. But who heard more? Christ drinking the cup of wrath, of God's wrath? Or God the Father having to administer the wrath? Having to punish his son? For when Christ died and his heart burst inside of him and he died... The father was still there awake. And see, now that I'm a parent, now put yourself in your parents' shoes, whether you got a daughter or a son. Picture that you have your child right there, and you're about to punish your child, and you know your child did not do anything. But you have to slay your child. And you know they're innocent. You know that they're they're about to pay. You're about to kill them, and but you're going to do it but. To, to, to save these others but you know your child is innocent God the Father when Jesus died on the cross God was still awake and had to stand there and look at what he had just done beloved we can't imagine what the Father went through because I know I couldn't do it if it was up to me to slay my son for mankind mankind would have perished y'all I hate to say it and and that, some people say oh Joshua said but I'm, I'm being honest with you I was I, I look at my son I cannot I love my son that's my son you know and I can imagine killing him with my with my hands for for a group of people when 90% of the people would not care at all would forget about it would talk bad about them would mock or make videos talking bad about them uh 
forget about the sacrifice anyway, not live their lives, you know, act like they don't need them and all this, with 90% would basically throw away the gift. Could I do it? Could I look my son in my eyes and kill him for, for others? It's a hard decision to make, beloved. And in, and in my sinful state right now, mankind would have perished if it was Joshua Wiley and holding my son Caleb. But anyway, so let's, when we look at the sacrifice of Christ, let's look at it in its fullness from all sides. God the Father and Christ had never been separate. Never been separate. This was something new for them. Being Jesus... Look, Jesus knows, he knew how horrible sin is to the Father. Beloved, did y'all know that Jesus thought, he thought that once he took on the sins of the world, that the same way the devil was cast out of heaven from God's presence because of sin, Jesus thought that he would forever be cast away for the Father. That's what the devil was pounding in his head in the Garden of Gethsemane. That's why Jesus was pleading, Father, let us, let's, let's find another way because he did not want to be forever cast away from God but then he made the choice anyway to do it anyway I'm reminded of a short story about a little boy this is this is the perfect analogy it's about a little boy and a sister the sister needed a blood transfusion and the doctor came to the little boy and said uh, you know your sister needs your blood to live you know you have the type that she needs she needs it and he said the boy little boy sat there for a little second and said okay and as the doctor was prepping the little boy for the transfusion, the little boy started telling the doctor, could you tell my mom and dad I'm going to miss them and things like that. And the doctor started laughing and looked at him and said, no, you're not going to die. And the little boy said, for real, I'm not going to die. The little boy thought that he was giving all his blood in his body for his sister and he was going to die. And he decided to do it anyway. That's what Jesus did for us, beloved. I mean, the story of salvation is so deep, so deep, so deep. But so as we approach the altar of burnt offering, let's realize the true significance that Christ stepped down as the word Ola in Hebrew, as altar of burnt offering means in Hebrew, Ola, meaning ascent or staircase or stairway to step down. That Christ here, Christ stepped down from royalty to die, to become a lamb slain on an altar. Hmm. He deserves way more than anything I could ever give him. Many of us, we, the first step, you know, like I say, not only does the altar, you know, uh, is the equalizer everybody who comes to God is only there not because of your good marriage or you're such a good person only you're only able to come to God because of the lamb that means we're all on the same playing field nobody's been I don't care how many certificates you got PhDs you got how long you went to church school this university that no your only reason you're able to come to God is because of the blood of Christ not only, and not only is it an equalizer but it's the only substance that's able to to get sin out of the soul. Look at look at uh, the blood as a dish to, as a laundry detergent. Sin, sin in our souls is the, the 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 dirt on our laundry. The laundry is our soul. Sin is the stain, the stain that like a coffee stain that just ain't coming out. No matter what you use, it's not you. You can't get it out. The blood of God is the only substance in the whole universe that can clear out, wipe out sin. Sin is a disease, y'all. Sin, let's look, you know, let's look at sin as a, 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 a virus or in itself a monster that's alive, breathing. And the blood is the, is the kryptonite, the only thing that can defeat it. The only thing that can wipe it out is the blood of God. The next next time we're going to deal with, okay, now we dealt with Christ's sacrifice laying down on the altar. Now we're going to deal with, are you willing to lay down on the altar and be burned up and burn self up? Everything of self. That's big for me, y'all. It's hard to lay down on that altar and burn self up, but it's the only way you, you can go to the Father. That's the only way we can be Christ-like. 
Y'all have a good one.